Hi there. Um, I thought I'd make a quick video about 3D printing because I've um, had a 3D printer for five, six years, and I'm not an expert. I um, don't actually use it that often, but I do use it to solve small problems around the house from time to time. And I've got a small problem today. Often um, when I mention I've got a printer, people ask, you know, how does it work? What's the? How do you design things? Where do you get things from? So I thought if I go through this little household first world problem, um, I'll be able to show the steps involved in designing a 3D object and uh, printing it and then, and then using it in real life. So here's the problem. I uh, make coffee in this thing called an AeroPress uh, and I do it this way up, which is called the inverted method. It's not the recommended way, but I like the way the coffee comes out. And I, to grind the coffee, I have this little hand grinder. It's a Hario hand grinder. So you put the beans in the top here, go like this, and the coffee collects in this little chamber. Now you can see I broke it already and fixed it with this stuff called sugary, which is a kind of hard rubber. Um, but what annoys me is I, I grind the beans into this bit, I then unscrew it, and then I pour it into the AeroPress. And then I have to clean this. And it, I only used it for a few seconds. So what I'd really like is to mount the grinder, click, click, direct into the AeroPress. Grind my beans directly in, ideally holding it that way, you know. But I have to hold it like this because it's not stuck yet. Grind my beans and then make the coffee and not have that one extra plastic vessel to uh, clean up. So yeah, minor problem, but fun one. So let's look at what we're dealing with. We've got this part has a thread. So if you see what normally goes into it, that's, that's a nice thread. This part has this weird sort of four, four part locking and the cap that normally locks on has these four wedge shaped things that lock in quite nicely. So looking at the parts that go in, I kind of want something like that to lock into the AeroPress with a hole in it and then have a thread like this coming up from the center here that I can mount the thing on. And that, actually now I think about it, that could be quite short, couldn't it? It could be quite flat. Could almost be this size. That'd be nice, nice little thing. Uh, so let's dive into CAD. Okay, so the software I'm using is uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. It's quite a full-on CAD program, um, but incredibly powerful and it's free for hobbyists for non-commercial use so I'm going to start by creating a sketch I'm going to try and explain everything I'm doing I'm sorry if you know all this software and I'm going to make a circle and what's the diameter of the circle well, let's see what's the diameter of uh, yeah that'll do it always calibrate your thingy zero What's the diameter of this circle? It's sixty-seven point nine six millimeters. So I'm going to say that's sixty-eight millimeters. So there's a difference in fusion between something having a having a dimension which is this it's now fixed at that size and before so let's just go back um, before that you could move the circle around as soon as I dimension it and say actually you know there's a there's an actual measurement here uh, you, you can't move that anymore you can know so that's my sketch I'm going to call it arrow press above so what do we do with the sketch that's a 2d element in our scene we're gonna extrude it this way now how far I reckon about as far as the AeroPress cap what's that 15 
16 that is. I'm going to say 15 millimeters. So it's even more slimline than this cap. Oh, hang on. Let's just check the fit. I'm going to go a bit bigger so I can go back in this timeline at the bottom. This is all the things I did. I drew a sketch and then I extruded it. So at any point you can go back into your timeline and change what you've done. So I'm going to make that uh, 18. Seems like a good size. Um, the other important aspect of this is these little locking ridges. So let's try and design them in. I can go back to the sketch. You'll notice it goes back in the timeline. And I need to draw. Let's have a look at it. It's actually flat. I don't think the sides are going towards the center. I think the sides are square, square on. But then the edge of it is round around the radius. So uh, that would be a arc, a center point arc. So it's centered on the middle and it goes boop. But then it has some sort of square edges. Um, I'm going to draw a construction line here. I'm going to draw another construction line from the center of that to the middle. And then I'm going to constrain that line to be vertical so this will snap nicely. I can zoom in a bit actually for the stream. Uh, and then this line is a nice vertical line. It's perpendicular, so that'll be locked. And that's perpendicular. So this is another sort of example of the constraints we've got. This circle's locked. This is locked at a right angle. This dimension isn't locked. Um, so actually, that's an interesting, that's an easy thing to measure. How far is that corner to that corner? Let's just see. The fact the edges are flat makes that nice and easy to measure. Mm -hmm. 25.5. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put in the exact measurement. Actually, a good practice is probably to measure it twice. 25.55. Five point four is one. Twenty five point four oh. So let's say twenty five point four. I'm going to err on the side of our model being a bit shorter than the real thing. So now I want to know. Freedom have I got left? Yeah. So now I want to know the depth of these little cuts. Let's get the little bit at the bottom of the. No. I'm, just, I'm not great at measuring, I've got to be honest. So that seems to me to be 3.4. 3.5 millimeters. So to mention that, 3.5 millimeters. Now everything's super constrained, so it's kind of locked. And you know you can move these around. It's meant to be generating a nice readable schematic. So finish the sketch. <clears throat> Go back to where we were. sketched it over there so for some reason. So I can select this profile and bring it up. How far do I bring it up? Hmm, good question. Haven't measured those things yet. So let's cancel that. <coughs> I'm gonna whoo, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make another sketch yeah, let's make a sketch in that dimension. 
and I'm going to project this line into the sketch. What's that doing? Let's be a bit clear about it. So this is the line in the AeroPress Above sketch. If I project it into my sketch, I get a line. If I turn off the other sketch, this is my sketch now. I've got a line that's in the plane of my sketch that's the same size. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm not going to make that noise anymore. So it automatically locked onto this first one. This little symbol means it's coincident. I had to tell it to lock onto the other end of that line. So now I've got a, a thing I can manipulate. And looking at the object, there's a slope. I'm going to draw a really exaggerated version. This is the kind of shape of the, the thing we're going to build. Um, let me measure those distances. So this end is 3.5 millimeters. Where's this guy gone? Yeah. And this one is 2.8 millimeters. It's a bit of giving this whole thing, you know. Um, and you'll notice I don't have to put this dimension in. If I try to, I'll get this thing in brackets, it's it's already, it's been driven by the other sketch. So I can put it in, you know, for clarity, but I don't need it for the, the shape to be finalized. So where are we at, where are we at? There's, sorry, there's one body, which is the big extrusion, and I've got these two sketches that I think are gonna be useful. Let me just rotate things around, sorry this is, Dizzyfying. Okay, so let's select this profile. I'm going to extrude it, not a specific amount, but I'm going to extrude it to this point at the top of the rectangle. I'm not going to join onto the existing thing, am I? No, I'm going to keep it as a new body. So you see, we've now got that body and that body. And now I'm going to take, uh, if you can't select something, you can hold it down. I'm going to take this this profile and extrude that. Let's turn this guy off. And let's turn this guy off. I'm going to extrude that all the way to this face. And it knows I'm doing a cut. I just want to check it's only cutting the visible body. Okay. So now let's just check it's got the slope. Yeah, so that looks easy. Ooh. That looks reasonable to me. Just eyeballing it from the real thing. Um, what should I call that? So now we can create a circular pattern of this body around this axis I want there to be four of them I'm not going to measure to check they're all I mean they're obviously symmetrical so we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there we're getting there so I think that's it for the AeroPress part let's look next at ah. I'm going to now combine all of these into one body. Let's give it a name. What's it called? Connector. <clears throat> so let's start looking at this, this screw top. There's three things I'm interested in measuring, aren't there? There's. Let's start a sketch. Uh, I'm going to start it in this plane. Does that make sense? Yeah. So previously I, I selected one of the actual planes in the in the coordinate system. I'm I'm, going, I'm explicitly sketching on this face now. I think there's three circles. Boom. Boom. And boom. 
to 43.8 million. I mean, okay, it's probably 44. But let's round up because we're interlocking with it. So that's the. Okay, and then there's the thickness of the thread. Now this isn't critical actually, that we get the same, is it? Because the thing we're mounting with is on the outside, so I can choose that dimension. I'll leave it to later. The other thing I'm kind of interested in is, I guess, this thickness. Like how far have we got? So that's just um, that's how thick we want to make. Is that really three millimeters? Yeah. Um, that's if we want something that this is this part is going to sort of nicely line up with. Then that you know it's just good to know. And this inner one, it's, it's up to me how thick that is, isn't it? Just for strength. You don't want it to be too. You can turn this body off. Um, that's just sort of the inner depth. So I would probably. Uh, okay, I'm going to take this off. Boom. So that's 43. I'm now going to draw a construction line from here to here. There's probably a much better way of doing it. I'm going to say explicitly that this is three millimeters. Boom. And then I can set this to whatever I want. I'm going to set it to 1.8 millimeters. Now, why 1.8? Because I kind of know that's a good number for my 3D printer. <laughs> um, uh, the extrusion width of the printer, that means the thickness of the line it puts down is 0.45. So a multiple of that means it's a, nice, it's a bit easier to print, a bit stronger. So actually it would be quite cool. So if I'm thinking about this on here, right, it would be quite cool if this bit sunk into a sort of receiver. Um, and it's pretty flat for a uh, what's yeah on the outside it's pretty flat for a good five mil so if it had a little recess to go into let's make that make it so actually before we do that this middle bit is gonna be the hole that all the coffee goes through so that's gonna extrude to the bottom cut yes bang nice Next, I'm thinking about recessing this down. So I'll take those two and I'm going to just say five millimeters or minus five, I should say. And it detects that's a cut. I'll take the sketch off, looks nice and clean. Uh, and then this surface is going to start from this new, so I can't start from where I drew the sketch because I did this change my mind I did this recess um, it's going to start from that face and it's going to go up like that and up like that right right everyone and that's going to have the thread on it so I need to measure that I didn't measure that Probably not critical, but eight point three. Oh God, how do you measure that thing? Yeah, use the little end thing. The little end thing on these calipers is really useful. Eight 
7.9, so let's say 8 millimeters. That's way less than I just put. <laughs> so now I've got this kind of shape, right? So that's going to have a little thread on it. Yeah, just thinking about the AeroPress, one of the nice things about this part is it's got like a satisfying grippiness. And so I'm going to go back in time. So before we did all this stuff, actually I don't have to. Uh, yeah, let's pretend I did it even before then. So on the sketch, I'll put it on the sketch. Um, I'm going to put these little square, they're indents, aren't they? No, they're out dents. I measured the out dents. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Bang. Bang. The trick is to use midpoints and um, horizontal vertical constraints to make things nice and square and symmetrical. Has that made it nice and... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is intersecting the circle. So that one has to if the midpoint is there. Blah, blah, blah. So let's put some dimensions on it. I'm going to just make that. So that doesn't need to be three male jeepers. One millimeter is enough. And then this dimension, like five millimeters. So we're still back in time at this point in history. If anyone in the comments knows why I sometimes lose that home button, let me know. But if I select that profile, extrude it to the top, I'm going to let it join rather than a new body. That looks nice. And then I'm going to do another circular pattern. Oh, don't hit that. Create a circular pattern. This time it's not a body, it's a feature. So the feature is the cut, is the join um, around this axis. And I want there to be 24 of them. Yeah, that looks nice. And now let's see, this could foul up the way we constructed that. No, that actually looks like it's sort of worked out okay, doesn't it? So we can go forward in history where that gets patterned round. Yeah. Oh yeah, everything's okay. So there's a chance, right, that the way we'd constructed that thing, the, th the little nobbles would have interfered. We don't seem to have. That's good. Uh, what should I call that? That was like the grinder screw above. So this is our part so far. I think the only thing to do is get this thread. So there's a really nice thread tool that has all of these built-in threads. But I've got no idea what this thread is. This is going to be a problem. Mind you, it's only plastic and the tolerances aren't that crazy. So one option is to just find out what kind of thread this is and just guess it's a metric thread. So it's prompting me to do this 43 mil M5 thread, but I just don't don't trust it. It doesn't look like a, the right pitch. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it the the foolish way, which is so I'm going to set this surface here. I'm going to create a. Core. I don't know why this is the way you have to do it. Don't don't blame me. 
create a coil. Wow. And what I can measure is the height and the pitch. So the height I know uh, is 18 millimeters, right? What? <laughs> okay, it's because it's doing a cut. I want it to make a new body. Why is that so much higher than 18 millimeters? Because it's not 18 millimeters, it was. Okay. What was this height? Eight millimeters. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So let's do the operation again. Okay, I might in even. I haven't parameterized that, so that last eight millimeters. I'm going to make a parameter called screw height. I'm going to set it to eight millimeters. I'm going to say that I excluded to a screw height. Nothing changes. So now when I make the coil, that's just like a variable. They're a sort of last resort. You, you want to try and do things referencing other objects. But here, for instance, I'm not given a, a chance to say it's the same height as this thing. So I have to create a, a variable. Call that screw height. Ah, and I, I'm measuring the height and pitch. Screw height, height. What's the pitch? So the pitch is how far apart, sort of peak to peak. I'll try and measure these calipers jeepers. My eyesight is not up to this. There, so it's from there. It's from... <laughs> There to there. Let me draw a picture of what I'm seeing. So I've got this sort of profile. quite rounded. Is it a circle? Is it a semicircle? Maybe. So the width of that thing, let's find a nice bit to measure, is two millimeters. It was 2.01 but you know case closed. It's definitely going to be two millimeters, isn't it? Um, the depth of it, if I can use my little gidget. Always oh, zero at first. Point eight millimeters. Okay. And then the bit I can measure easily. He said, I can measure somewhat easier is okay, that's two millimeters as well. So I think that makes the pitch. No, pitch is there to there, you idiot. So actually that's four millimeters. <laughs> so the pitch is center. So that's one plus the two plus another one. We'll find out when we print it, you know.
So I'm going to make it square. Let's just see what we're doing. Let's just make it. See what we end up with. So we end up with this like square spiral. All we know is it goes on for that long. And these are four millimeter apart, which seems to be right. I'm confident about that. But then the shape of it. What what I've measured is that it's about 0.8 proud, but two across, base to base. Which makes me think it's a sort of Oh gosh. So if we do a one that's that dimension's more important to be right. If it's a bit thinner than the thing it's screwing into, that's okay. It'll rattle slightly. So I'm gonna make it slightly bigger than I measured. And then I'm gonna come in and select these outer edges and I'm going to chamfer them by like 0.2 so you get this I mean it's a chamfer not a I could fillet it why am I even messing around fillet bang bang 0 0.2 0 0.3 1 yeah, so these will be 1.8 across and 0.9 out, and they'll be sort of roundish. I think that's going to be enough. Put it back in the context of the thing. Um, what doesn't look right? That top bit looks rubbish. Hang on, where am I? Navigate, navigate. This bit here looks rough as what does it look like on a real one I see they square that edge off so let's go back to where I did that fillet what if I chamfered that edge hang on uh, yeah chamfer that edge off I love the word chamfer distance and angle 10 degrees, one millimeter. Oh, I don't really understand how angle works. <laughs> Getting lost, hang on. Two distances, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So one mil that way. Hang on, the whole thing's only 0 0.9. 0 0.5. That's where it's going wrong. 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. Which way is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks good. So that could be 0.9 because I know that's the dimension anyway. And then this could be like 10 millimeters. Apparently not. Eight millimeters? One millimeter. Two millimeters. Three millimeters. Four millimeters. Five. Six. There's some geometry here I'm not quite getting, but okay, six is a lot most of give me. Let's do it. And then we need to sort of trim the top off, don't we? Um Okay, the only way I can see, to, I can think of a quick way of doing it, which is to, sp oh, cancel, is to split the body. Uh, the body to split is this guy. The splitting tool is this face. Bang. Two things I haven't but done wrong. <laughs> oh God. So I'm gonna get rid of this combine. Do -do. Um, I've done two things wrong. One is, I, when I was doing that, this is a few minutes later. I've just realised I made the mistake. Um, when I was cutting this, it's in the, it's inside the surface. Why is that? Because when I set up the coil, let's look at it. Edit. I said it on the centre. I want it to be outside the thing I'm modelling. Yes, look, much better. 
the chamfer now looks much more sensible. The fillet now does work. You noticed it was red before I made that change? It was because it couldn't fillet it anymore um, since the combined. So now, now I'm going to combine them together. Oh gosh almighty. I find it so hard to do this and talk. <laughs> You'd think I'd be okay at talking by now. So let's take a look. What else do we want to fix? Um, I think that's all right, is it? Maybe I want to round off these corners a bit. Oh, I really don't want to have to select all of these faces to do a fillet. <laughs> It'd be nice to round that off. Let's look also at, it's good when you're 3D printing something to look at the section. Symmetrical so we can just look in one direction. Um, so the thing that's standing out, I guess, is there's a lot of material here that isn't really necessary. Um, could add a little chamfer at the bottom here to save some material. Uh, five mil. That looks fine. Ten mil. This is just somewhere for the coffee to drop. That looks fine to me. Uh, and because that's a forty-five degree angle, the printer's going to be fine doing that. Let's just talk about how the printer's going to draw it. It's going to draw a ring. This, you know, a ring on the bed this distance and then the next layer is going to draw a ring that's slightly further out this way but 45 degrees is going to be fine it's just going to poke out a little bit over the, the previous layer and it'll do that all the way up so the only bit in the model that I'm a bit dodgy about is this bit and I've made the decision not to fix it <laughs> Right, so turning the analysis off, I think that extra little bit I've cut at the bottom is going to save a load of plastic. I don't think it's going to really compromise the rigidity. I would like that to be a bit rounded. Oh, maybe, maybe I can go all the way back to here before I cut all that stuff in it, fillet it here. Oh, let's see. Let's see what success we have. Mm, like a nice five mil fillet and then come right back to the future and everything just works <laughs> ah, that was too good to be true wasn't it so everything didn't work so I'm going to take out that fillet that I just added this is the nice thing about the history right um, I'm gonna, I am gonna round that off, but I'm gonna do it in a sort of primitive way. I never claim to be an expert. Um, oh, cracky. So what do I want? I want a reference. What do I want to reference? I wanna project that. And I wanna project that. And I wanna project that three things so when I look at just my sketch yeah I've just got that top surface and an idea of where the that's the inner edge and that's the outer edge so let's oh, I also want to have an idea of where the inside is don't I oh look I never said I was good at CAD I think it's good to see people do things incredibly amateurishly. So I'm just going to draw a uh, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Boom. This is going to be the the, the sort of shape that gets swept. I see I was completely not in the sketch fine yeah five mil rectangle and then I'm going to create a arc 
center point arc here. And I'm going to take this shape, turn this guy back on, and I'm going to revolve it around this, and it's going to be a cut. <laughs> Back to the sketch, please. So, obviously, the thing I referenced is wrong. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. You know what? These bits aren't going in. <laughs> Let's do it the manual way. This is so frustrating. No, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> there's got to be a better way. All right, I did it. I did a. I went down a wrong ave avenue there, and it was really just me being incompetent. It wasn't anything interesting. So I'm going to fill it this off. Uh, five mil. Okay, and then I'm going to go to where we made the thing. Gonna change that. I want it to go to this object, but less five millimeters. I guess that's a minus five. Okay. And then I'm going to fill it this. Okay. Does that look okay or crap? That looks all right. And then when we do the circular pattern, I need to change that so it's both the extrude and the fillet that are part of the pattern that's copied around. And then back up to present. Sweet. I think that looks reasonable. So, so to print it, I'm going to select it. Uh, high refinement. This is just how many triangles. We're basically exporting a file called an STL. Um, an STL file is a really naive 3D object format. It's just triangles. It's not got any color metadata. It doesn't really have an, a concept of objects, so uh, it, there are better formats now, but STL is the standard. Um, so you can make mistakes. You can have things that don't really make shapes, just random triangles. But it's a sort of uh, universal format. And I've got it set up so it can export into my 3D printing program. Uh, the next step is called slicing. So we have to turn the object into a set of instructions for a specific printer. So I have a Prusa printer. Um, I have a Prusa Mark 2.5S, which is basically a Mark 2.5 printer, a Mark 2 printer, with um, a bunch of bits from the Mark 3 added on. Um, and this program's job is to, like I said, to turn a 3D object into a kind of how to print uh, set of instructions. So I've got some options. What's the layer height going to be? I'm going to, I'm going to actually do it at a slightly faster, a 0.2 layer height, 0.2 millimeters per layer. I'm going to print it in PET. Yes, that's fine. 
and let's just hit slice now. You can see this um, just on the on the subject of the the three D model. It's got nearly forty thousand polygons, and it is a manifold. A manifold means it's a object that has an inside and an outside. You can imagine lots of objects don't have insides and outsides. A flat two-dimensional sheet isn't a manifold, but to print something, it has to be a manifold. It has to, you know, the slicer has to know which bits are the bits where the plastic is and which bits are the bits where the plastic isn't. And a lot of, a lot of the problems you get with these file formats are when things aren't manifolds. So this is a print strategy. It's color coded and you can sort of see that it would start by printing this shape on the bed. On top of it, it will print this shape like toothpaste from a tube and then it'll print this 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 and it started to in these big solid areas it's using what's called an infill it's not solid plastic it just prints a shape um, and that's something i might i am gonna change but just seeing how it prints any sort of crazy problems things that would be hanging in the middle of the air Um, da -da -da -da, it's fine. That bit is only th three or four perimeters thick. Oh. It's printing the screw. Actually, it looks fine to me. Um, the only thing I'm going to change, I'm going to set it to three perimeters explicitly. Set up a few things that probably should just be default. Then the infill, I'm going to change it to a gyroid infill, which is a different pattern that is, seems a bit stronger. Um, I think it's a bit stronger for sort of torque rotational forces. It's, well, it's strong in all sorts of dimensions. See, the gyroid pattern is this crazy wavy pattern. It was a honeycomb before. Whoa. Um, and there's something about this pattern that makes it super strong. You can sort of see it changes direction so regularly. It's, it's good for objects that you think need to have strength in lots of different dimensions. I think twisting is something where we want it to be strong. Um, yeah, so if we print it like this, it's going to use 24 gram, 25 nearly grams of plastic. I've, I've told it how much this plastic costs. So it's 68 pence worth of plastic. It's going to take two hours to print slight very slightly longer if I put it in the sort of quiet mode um, that's it really not much more to do I can save this onto an SD card and put it in my printer the, the G code it generates you can sort of see it's a set of instructions um, set the max set the speed rates set the um, calibrate the printer um, where's the temperature stuff? Set the hot in the, the extruder to 230 Celsius. Set the bed to 85 Celsius. That will comes from the the, the the filament settings. Lots of coordinate moves. Here's where the head moves. Right. So it's a very simple format. Um, I can actually send it directly to the printer. because I have a Raspberry Pi connected to my printer to act as a kind of print server. Um, and I've exchanged some keys and things with the software so it can push it directly into the software which is called OctoPrint, which is an open source um, um, print server for 3D printers. So the next bit we're gonna do is to uh, actually print the thing. This is the um, this is the OctoPrint control panel. I've I've uh, switched my printer on. I've set it to preheat. Uh, I've checked there's a filament in there, and actually I need to give this bed a bit of a clean with some alcohol. It's best to do that before it's heating, but we'll find out if that was a mistake. Um, and yeah, 
So in the Octoprint setup, you can see I've got uh, this little webcam mounted on the on the bed. That's a Raspberry Pi cam. Um, that means I can see what's going on near the printer. I can connect to the printer, and I can tell it, let's print this part. It's printing. Um, and you can see the temperature, the, uh, the hot end here, a little bit in there that's uh, actually dribbling plastic. I need to clear that first. Um, it's going to heat up to 230. We're just waiting for it to heat up to that level. Uh, the bed is going to heat up to 85. It's only at 48. As soon as that's finished, we're going to start printing. Um, and basically this little head is going to, you can sort of see the head can move sideways and up. And the bed takes care of the Y direction. So deposit plastic on this surface, layer by layer, till we've got the, the object that we wanted. Just going to let it start off. Look at the panel, temperature's nearly there, and it's starting to print. So the first step is calibration. This cable is needing some better management. I'm just hoping it doesn't foul anything up. measures and points embedded into the print bed to check the calibration is correct and draws a little line here. There's a rattling noise coming from this pulley which I have not heard before which is a bit of a worry. And you can see it's laying down black on black's a bit hard to see but you can see it's starting to lay down the plastic. And if we look at the G-code viewer and compare, this is the planned print, and this is what it's really doing. So that's pretty neat. Um, and there's a bit of a blob there. I now have to watch to see if that blob becomes a problem, or whether the printer just sort of blobs over it. We will see, we will see. Oh, there's a massive blob on the bed. That's not good. I'm going to try and grab it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the sort of thing that happens on the first layer sometimes. This printer actually has been giving me some problems, but hopefully now I've caught that there won't 90% of the problems happen on the first layer. And actually this textured sheet that um, I've got covers a lot of issues um, because um, it's got a texture anyway, so a slightly messy first layer is maybe going to be okay. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Let's come back when it's finished printing. So, I stopped the print. I uh, started it off and went to put this cap back on the top of the AeroPress and realised we've left quite a small hole in the middle of our piece and this actually has a raised bit that we need to take into account so we're gonna to have to go back into CAD. Um, the good news is the print didn't get very far, um, wasted this much plastic, I screwed it up in anger <laughs> but you can sort of see it's the right sort of shape. I've sort of fitted it against the real thing, this one layer. I do do this sometimes, just print a single layer to check a fit. Um, I don't like doing it because it's a waste of plastic if you're already okay. And I think it looks good to me. Um, so all we need to do is go back into CAD and redesign it so that this bit can can fit in the bottom. It doesn't have that flat bottom that we originally did. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is this little chamfer I put on the bottom and delete that feature. Um, this isn't correct. We need to go right back to the start. So the, the first <coughs> diagram I drew, really, I should have captured two circles, shouldn't I? The, the outside and inside of the thing we're trying to avoid. So I've got my calipers here. 
measure this thing. The outer size is mm, 63 and a half. So I'm going to say 64, just so we get a good clearance around it. And the inner diameter Fifty-seven point two. So if I say fifty-seven, uh, that's where we need to cut. Um, so if I finish the sketch now, uh, nothing's happened. I've just changed the sketch. But we go back in time to when I had just extruded this beautiful uh, sphere. Uh, cylinder. I'm going to take this. Oh, it's right next to the edge. It's going to destroy everything. <laughs> I'm so depressed. I'm just going to see what needs to happen here. That needs to pull in, doesn't it? Drive in that way. Now, what depth? How deep are you? So the little bit that we're trying to avoid sticks up by exactly 13 mil. So let's say 14 mil. And see what. It's done. Um, how high was that? That's 18, and I've, I've only left 4 mil. That's still okay. And then I chamfered that. Did all these things. Let's go back to the present day. How bad does it look? Um, it's not as bad as I'd feared, actually. It seems to have cleared a lot of things. We need to look at this section analysis, really, to see. It's a bit close for comfort, isn't it? Especially on that edge where I did that fillet. So if I dial that fillet, is it this one? Hmm. Sometimes not sure why I can't select things. Uh, let's go back to here. <laughs> it's complaining that um, my max performance is reduced. That's the dangers of doing these things, isn't it? Now I remember I extruded that up three mil off. There's a nicer way of doing that than typing it in both places, but I'm sort of annoyed that I got things wrong, so I'm trying to skip steps. And then back to the start and look at the analysis. You know what, I'm going to go back to this very first extrude. I'm going to make it 20. Just looking at the ruler. Yeah, if it was 20 mil deep, that wouldn't matter. If it was 24 mil deep, it wouldn't matter. I'll put 24 in, it's a nice number. That looks a bit healthier, doesn't it? I'm not going to be able to change that distance very much. But I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Let's try printing this and see if it fits into the damn thing. I'll spare the uh, details of slicing and uh, printing and hopefully just show you the finished thing. Okay, it's now the next day. Um, I got a notification on my phone, the print finished, but uh, I was doing uh, life stuff. So I um, uh, resisted the temptation to look at the part and uh, let's take it off the printer now. It's got, this printer has a removable bed, which um, uh, you can see it looks pretty good. And when I flex, oh, I don't even need, 
to come off. So you can normally flex it a bit to get the part off. This is a ring that gets drawn around the um, around the perimeter, just as a kind of extra step to get rid of the blobs. And here's our bit. It looks awesome, actually. Looks really clean. I really like this textured sheet for printing PET plastic. I didn't talk about the type of plastic. Um, this is PET. The top layer looks all right. The sides have these nice nobbles on. The bottom has the texture it gets from the, the textured sheet, which actually hides a lot of sins. Uh, I'm avoiding, I can see the little bridge if I look inside. I'm avoiding trying it because I know it's not going to fit. There's about a one in three chance it's going to fit. There's another one in three chance that I'll be able to sort of sand things down a bit and make them fit and there's a one in three chance it just won't fit at all. But that's what you do. You can print another one. I feel really bad wasting plastic though. So let's see with the AeroPress. Actually let's just compare it. That's the AeroPress and that's my thing. Uh, if I hold them up to each other, things seem to match up. Dimensions seem to match up. Let's do it. Oh, that's really tight. <laughs> that's really tight fit. So that on and off is nowhere near as clean as it should be. But it does click down. That's really tight on. And I can't really turn it. Right, so that's too tight. I'll need to do some measurements to figure out why that's too tight. It, it's so tight that I can't turn it to click in those locking joints and actually I can't get the bloody thing out again. But that's a really firm fit, so in a sense that's good. Um, why is that too tight? It might be, it might be just be the first layer. It's the first layer that's against the print bed. It's a bit more squished deliberately just to make sure it sticks to the bed. And that creates a kind of elephant's foot I got it out by putting the piston in. It creates a kind of elephant's foot, so it's possible there's a bit of a lip here uh, inside this groove, which I could try sanding. Oh yeah, I can see there's a massive elephant's foot going on on both edges. I could try sanding, or actually I could add a very small chamfer around this. So maybe I'll do that. On the model, I'll add a sort of one mil chamfer both sides of this, so there's a sort of easy, easy in. So we're going to be making another one. Hmm. I could try sanding it. I might, if this fits, if this fits, I'll try sanding that side, and I can update the model, but not reprint it. Um, and this is the thread that I made, right? So this is the bit that's least likely to work. <laughs> so my dad told me when you're putting this thread on, you always go anti-clockwise until you hear the click, which I just heard, and then you go in the direction. Oh no. Oh no. It's not breaking the thread, it's just not... Just sort of clicking out of the thread. Fit like it feels like it's engaging and then it's not going any further and I can see why uh, this this slot isn't wide enough either this slot that the this is meant to sit into seems really narrow so what I'll do I'm gonna have a little cry <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to measure the real world dimensions against the real world dimensions and see which ones are wrong and then we'll go back into CAD and, and update it and then we'll print another one so maybe tomorrow I might get another chance today maybe tomorrow we'll have a working copy a working version all right this is the fun this is the fun of adventure of 3d printing so one quick thing I um, wanted to test whether the adding a chamfer would work so I've, I've done it 
with a knife. Just sort of went around the material. It's pretty strong stuff, PET, but um, you know, you can cut it. Um, and good news is now I've reduced that elephant's foot. It fits nicely and comes off nicely ish. The other thing I've noticed is that these ridges, these thumb ridges, are a bit too wide, so they're, they're, they're the only thing that's sort of sticking now. So I'm definitely going to add a chamfer around the bottom just to compensate for any elephant's foot. A well calibrated machine won't have that. I'm going to change it. I'm also going to reduce the height because this feels super strong, um, so I don't feel like I need all that height. But that, if that's screwed on, and I could sort of hold that and grind, that would be exactly what I want. So we're getting there. Right, so the first thing is I wanted to chamfer this edge and this edge. Do them together so they're the same action. A millimetre seems a lot. Um, let's take a millimetre off, why not? That's a bit more than I took off with the knife, but it's just to be safe. The other thing was this little knobble. So how did I do that? I've got to try and remember. It's a good test of your of your CAD, isn't it? Can you remember where things are? I think it was on this sketch, right? Yes, there it is. So I'm going to make that point 0.8. Less knobbly. Everything we compute, everything still looks all right. That little thing at the top didn't get too badly affected. Yeah, let's hit save. Oh no. This initial extrude, I was going to dial it back again. Back from 24 to 16. Let's look at the analysis uh, from over here. That is a bit narrow, so let's call it 18. Yeah, I feel that's all right. That's not going to be getting much stress. It's going to be all the way around the edges, kind of torsion talking stress so I think that's okay hit save modified now I've got to remember okay now let's take a look at this sketch what did I do wrong what have I done wrong let's look at the real thing uh, and get my calipers in case I want them. So this has ended up, this interior has ended up being exactly 40. The interior on the real thing can't possibly affect anything. I think that's what I told myself last time. Interior on the real thing's 38, so we've made it a bit thicker. I th I'm happy with that, that's fine. Which would make, let me double check the other thing. I want to check this dimension here. In my drawing it's 50. On the real object it's a little bit over 50. And on the printed object, it's 50. So I think that's where I've gone wrong, is I've tried to, this, this, there's no reason this has to be so accurate. I can bump that up to four millimeters. And now this channel has a bit of extra width. I should probably also add a bit of a chamfer there, right? these edges just a mill uh, 
Um, is that the best thing? Maybe I should fillet it. Because then it will match the other side. Was that 3 mil? That looks nice actually. If I turn off the analysis from the outside, that will look quite nice. It will still nestle in there. And you know, there's a lot, lot, lot more clearance for that thing to get into the slot. Less plastic as well. Um, so the screw. The screw is completely wrong. So where did I do that? I did that here. So let's go back in time. To a time before. And think about what we've done. I'm going to re-measure all of the dimensions on the real thing. So let's turn the coil on because I think it's still useful to look at. The height is this variable screw height, which I reckon is eight mil. Okay, so let's say what have I got it in as eight mil? Yeah, that's probably all right. Um, the screw on the real thing doesn't go all the way to the top though it finishes I'm going to say 2 mil below going to finish there that's okay there's this that's going to get chamfered off that's fine and then this splits not going to make any sense this is a good example of timeline problems so I'm actually going to delete that split delete it and then this combine what does that combine it's combining the coil with the connector oh, it's figured it out so I messed with history History is now back. Let's look at this thing. Oh gosh. How do I get this coil correct? Um, the pitch. The pitch is center to center, and I've put it as four mil. So let's just measure four mil and put it on the real thing and look if it looks right. That does look correct. I think. Uh, unless I misunderstand what a thread pitch is, that's all right. I also need to check the size of this thing. That is a two mil. Why well, have I got it as one mil? Two millimeters it is. Thank you. It's because it was only sticking out one mil, wasn't it? Point eight, point nine. So I'm going to go back on what I did earlier. I'm going to put it back on the centre so that the thread is sort of two mil that way, that way, and but only one mil that way. I think that looks all right. Oh god. Um, I think that might be it for now. I'm going to do a test print. How am I going to do a test print? I'm going to split this body I just saved so I feel alright doing this I'm going to split the body boom like that <laughs> which one do I want? I want that one no, I want that one so I'm going to remove these guys remove and as if by magic I've got a little coil that I can print I'm going to edit the sketch to make this wall that I don't care as much about 0.9 mil. I'm going to have to have to remember to undo that. Oh god, I'm going to forget, aren't I? So I'm just going to print this and see if it fits in the thing. Let's see what the little screw fitting looks like. Um, 
comes off the bed pretty easily. It's just a little test fit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's look at the grinder that it's supposed to be emulating. It's way thicker for a start. Oh, is it though? It's just not a chamfered. I didn't apply a chamfer, did I? Mm. Let's see if it fits into the thing. That's the most important. Um. Oh, that actually feels pretty good. It's screwed in, isn't it? Gone in flush. If I try and pull it out laterally. <laughs> laterally? What am I saying? That feels... Mm, feels like a decent fit. Decent. I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is sort of cush it round further than it should go. It's not going. Wow, might be a success. So, that was a waste of filament really, wasn't it? Because it worked. Seems a success. I'm actually going to have to get this out with pliers. It's so well in. So now I'm confident printing the whole part, um, which is going to take a couple of hours. So let's see. Right, so the print's just finished. Um, I'm going to get it off the bed and take a look. I'm so nervous. So here it is. Um, let's see if it pops off the sheet clean. The sheet is actually still about 80 degrees, so it's red hot. A um, couple of little stringy things, but a little bit stringy on the inside there. This is just where plastic's dragged around a bit by the print head. You get like little spider webby stuff. That generally just comes off. Um, this looks pretty reasonable. Bottom looks good. You can see the bridge in there. There's a bit of string in there actually. You can see the bridge is a bit messier. Top surface looks fine. Screw looks alright. Oh god. Let's try it. So area press end locks in really nicely. And the grinder end. screws in nice and tight. Hey, it actually works. Not that I didn't expect it to work, but oh, that feels strong as well. Yeah, good. So I've got my measured amount of beans that I want to grind. Put the top on, put the handle on. And I can hold the other press. I grind my beans. Awesome. So works. Does it come off again? Oh, that's a good test. Yeah. So actually, maybe I should have made it a bit taller. That's a bit tight to come off. So what I'm going to be able to do: pop that on the scale, measure my beans onto it, clunk it into the air press. I'm probably not going to unscrew it uh, unless I want to use the grinder for something else. And get grinding. So I'm super happy. That's going to change my life. At what cost? Um, that's about 70 pence worth of plastic. Um, how long did it take? I probably did about an hour and a half of two hours of messing around in CAD. I was going slower than I normally would because I was talking about it. So if I, would, if I didn't find that stuff fun it wouldn't be worth it. Plastic cost is minimal. Um, I wasted this much plastic with test prints, failing prints. Um, so that's probably another 80p. So I've probably spent a couple of quid, let's say, in plastic. This is going to go in the drawer of stuff I feel guilty throwing away because it's not recyclable. One day I'll find a use for loads of bits of PET.
I'm really chuffed. I really like, the thing I really like about 3D printing is the way it goes from, lets you go from some sort of problem, exploring a, exploring the solution in software, which appeals to me, it's a bit, it tickles the same parts of the brain as, as uh, software engineering. And you've got a physical thing at the end that solves your problem. Um, I, I've, it's taken me three days to build this, but that's because, that's largely because I've been stop starting. The active time wasn't big. Of course, the next person who who wants one of these things um, doesn't need to do all that design time. They can download it. Um, I'm going to upload it to Thingiverse and maybe some other sites. They can just search for it and find it and print it. So if you want one of these, um, I'll put the link in, in the description. So I think that's it. That's the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give me some feedback. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll make another one if uh, people liked it.